So if you often come home from shoots and you have high hopes for all the images you shot, but you're ultimately disappointed due to blurry images, you should definitely watch this video. So today I'm out here in a woodland location that I haven't been to in quite a while, actually. Um, it's a place where I've actually shot one of my favorite local images was this um, cliff with uh, birch trees that had yellow leaves on and this uh, very contrast, uh, contrasty green trees in the background, um, which I really loved. And today I'm gonna spend the evening here and just try to find some pictures and maybe I'll come home with something nice. The place I'm at today, I believe used to be a quarry decades ago. Um, now it's fully overgrown with trees, bushes and grasses. And this leads me right into the topic that I want to talk to you about. No one would think about shooting a dynamic scene like a race car passing by with a low shutter speed, except of course, if you want the motion blur in the background. Um, when people shoot static scenes though, they don't really think about all the parts that are moving in the image um, due to the wind for example and they just match their shutter speed to achieve the lowest ISO possible. And in a place like this, where you're naturally a bit higher up, since it's a quarry and the wind can be a bit stronger, the wind can really show itself in your pictures if you don't take any precautions. So when you arrived home and you had big hopes for all the pictures you took on that day, this can really crush all your hopes and dreams with your images as soon as you look at your images on a bigger high resolution screen. Because the wind will ultimately blur certain parts of your image, um, for example grass or leaves or even entire trees on a particularly windy day, basically rendering them useless. So I already found my first photo opportunity. Um, as you can see right here is this fallen tree that's covered in moss and ivy. Um, next to it is a boulder um, and right behind there is somewhat of a cliff. It's not that high, I think it's about six to seven meters. I actually shot the shot from right here, already took it. Um, I think it's a good example for what I'm talking about today because I had to boost up my ISO because the canopy doesn't really let through a lot of light. So I think I'm on 2500 ISO, um, one tenth of a second to get somewhat of a decent uh, shutter speed. Though I'm pretty lucky in the sense that there is not much wind here because of the cliff. So I think I got away with it. Um, otherwise I would have needed to boost my ISO even higher than that. Um, I think I shot on f5.6 and I took five different images to stack them together um, to be in focus all the way from the foreground to the background of the picture. Um, yeah, I'll just show you the picture and uh, you can tell me what you think of it. You have probably heard hundreds of times that you should always try and shoot at the lowest ISO possible. Um, for my Fujifilm X-T4 I think that's about 160, uh, that's its base ISO. Um, but other full frame cameras for example actually go down to like 80 ISO or I think even 64 ISO, some of the newer cameras. That's probably why people are afraid to push the ISO a little higher than its base ISO, but that's specifically what you need to do on windy days. When the weather conditions call for it, when it's especially windy on a certain day, um, don't be afraid to push your ISO a little higher. Um, obviously don't overdo it, but don't be afraid to go to an ISO like 1600 or 3200. Personally, I would rather have a grainy image than a blurry image, because a uh, grainy image you can often fix in post, but a blurry image you can completely throw away because you can't do anything with it. So on windy days where you're shooting a static landscape that has bushes, leaves, trees, whatever, try aiming for a shutter speed of 1 over 125 or 1 over 250th of a second. Um, and on especially windy days with a very strong wind, um, maybe even go as high as 1 500 of a second. So I've actually found another shot and was a bit of a close call because the light is changing all the time. It's right here, you can see. Um, these birch trees behind me and this meadow leading up to it and I actually, even though it's not that windy right now, I try to up the shutter speed a bit and uh, also up the ISO therefore um, to be able to freeze the motion because the grass is moving a little bit, um, not much, but uh, I think I was on 320 for the second and ISO 1250, I think. Um, F5.6, but that's just because, well, I'm focused on the trees in the background, so it's not that big a deal. I was zoomed in a little bit, so yeah. Um, I shot it in vertical format because I wanted the 
sky <laughs> you can't see i just realized um, because there is like dark clouds in the sky i think it looks really nice and um, i actually have the sunlight that was just peeking through a cloud from right over there um, just shining upon the background of the leaves of these birches and yeah i think it looks really nice um, i just walked past this opportunity saw it and immediately had to shoot it um, and luckily made it in time um, anyway, I'll show you the picture and you can just tell me what you think of it. In conclusion, if you oftentimes come home from a shoot and you have the problem that parts of the images you shot are blurry due to the wind, don't hesitate to push the ISO a little higher than you would usually do um, to be able to up the shutter speed, to be able to actually freeze the motion in your shot. I hope you liked this short video and if you did, I would really appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up and if you have any questions or opinions regarding this topic, just let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this, uh, subscribe to my channel and that's it from me for today. Have a good one.